Hello and welcome to the Backland Report. Every week, Fred Alfader and I check in on the world of golf to bring you the latest news, insights, analysis, interviews, recaps, previews. Hey, we cover anything and everything golf. In other words, if it happened in golf, we have it for you. And today we're getting together because there was some news, Fred, um, and we have to make an exception because we have to talk about ridiculousness and that's what this is going to be about for it. Yeah, well, we, we want to keep people updated on what's going on uh, behind the scenes a little bit. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the Open Championship is still three weeks away. It doesn't start till July 15th, but there's already some rumbling coming out of the south of England. What's that all about, Carlos? Well, you know, I was happy. We were happy last week because there were news that the Open Championship, hey, man, 32,000 fans here at Royal St. George for a day. Uh, that we were, hey, man, that suggested tournament by carry, might be carried out under some semblance, right, of pre-COVID normalcy. Not the same, but hey, we were happy celebrating and all that. However, we learned about a, a five-page update that the RNA sent to the players, coaches, caddies, and agents this week regarding health and safety protocols at the event. And surely it changes the tone for all of them because let's go high level and maybe the most important things that they're saying. One, the players are required to undergo COVID testing even if they're fully vaccinated. Okay, um, don't understand why, but hey, they cannot go, they cannot share accommodations, not, nor they can go to restaurants or stores. What are you expecting them to do? I mean, to just be there in their apartments or wherever they are? Uh, that's ridiculous. Some players already long ago made accommoda accommodations and right now they will have to scramble to find new lodging. That's incredible. And, other thing, if they're in contact with somebody who tested positive, immediate disqualification. What? Not even after testing, test me. I mean, it doesn't, uh, for a reason, I'm being vaccinated, right? Because I'm not going to get that thing. But according to the memo, and this is, doesn't stop it here, no more than four people can stay together because they must be part of the player's own support group. That's what they're saying. That's what the memo say. That means caddies are player who otherwise might stay together to save some money. Can't do that. They have to stay with their own players now. How about the agents or the coaches that, hey, I have a couple of players that I have to, to coach. I cannot stay with them either. What's going to happen there? I mean, each player may bring only one family member as well. But hey, the strict quarantine requirements before the tournament likely will keep them at home now because they're going to have to quarantine prior to being with them. But the players, no. The players, caddies, and support team are not part of that quarantine. I was reading that Pete Cowan, who... Uh, sorry, let me calm down. <laughs> anyway, I was reading about Pete Cowan, who's with Rory McIlroy. He was saying, you know, I was gonna, we rented, we're going to rent an RV where we're going to stay near where the, the course is and the practice and all that because it seemed wise. It wasn't cheap, but hey, we're, we're going to all stay together. Now he can. He has to find out where he's going to stay. Fred, I'm going to stop here right now and turn it over to you. Take a I can breath. Go, Take a I breath. Can go, yeah, I can go <laughs> all day about this ridiculous thing because here's the other thing. 32,000 people are going to be there and they're not subject to anything. It's the players who are away from them that are required to go through all this. But hey, Ma Martin Slumbers is saying, yeah, look, this is not me. I'm just following here what the UK government is saying. It's not me. Sorry, man. It's my bad. It's them. It's not me. So, Fred, how about this ridiculousness? I think it's a bunch of crap myself, but uh, I, I, I got some other thoughts on I'll share with you later. Uh, yeah, the, you know, we were, we were good, you know, 32,000 fans a day uh, inside the gates. Uh, that's, I mean, that's even more than we're allowing here in the United States right now. They're only, what, about 10,000 normally on a whole big golf, golf course, but at least they're letting people in. They're letting 140,000 people in Wembley Stadium for soccer games and stuff. Uh, what, what's the big deal? I don't get it, you know. If you're, if you're vaccinated and you can prove it, 
what is the problem? I don't, I don't understand all of that uh, at all. Um, no visiting other players there. You got to stay in your own little pod, your own little foursome. Like you said, players had accommodations rented out, lined up. They had to get out of those. They all have to stay together in these certain hotels and those things are booked up. So they're scrambling to get rooms and accommodations and all this stuff. Uh, as you mentioned, Pete Cowan, they were going to see, he was staying with some other caddies in a, in a trailer. Well, that's out. They can't do that. So now they're scrambling to find some place to stay. Um, no dining out. You got to order groceries in or food into the room. No going outside, no going to restaurants, any of that stuff. As you said, players are only allowed a caddy plus two other people to accompany them during the tournament. Well, that's not a big deal. That's okay. But so the RNA said, the easing of COVID-19 restrictions in the United Kingdom has been delayed. And as a result, hell, even Michigan is back to full production, for goodness sake, and they're like the worst in the world. The easing of COVID-19 restrictions in the UK has been delayed. As a result, we have been required by the government to put strict health and safety measures in place. The UK reported 35,000 new cases of the new Delta variant of the COVID-19 last week. The uh, Delta variant accounts for 95% of all new cases in the UK. Um, the, the RNA is saying that the government's making the requirements of the players. Well, that just makes very little sense to me, Carlos. I don't get it. As we mentioned before, the stadiums are filled with people. They're going to allow people on the golf course. Why are they putting this all on the players? Even players with a negative test will re be required to abide by the rules. It's not really a quarantine, but a negative test required within 72 hours of traveling to the United uh, to the UK. A second test will be required when they arrive, unless they're coming in from Scotland from the Aberdeen uh, Scottish Open, because they're going to be tested as they leave Scotland. So you know, on the PGA Tour today, we're pretty much out of the restriction business. You know, the players can stay where they want. There is no real bubble here. Uh, for the open, however, that's all out the window. Um, so this is like an inner bubble. It's not even a bubble. It's an inner bubble with just your four people. So um, I, I'm Carlos. I'm thinking that uh, that guys are not gonna go. Uh, I mean, if I were them, I would consider very much whether I would go or not. Uh, one player said. It's aggravating that they deem the tournament safe enough for 32,000 fans a day to attend, but won't let a player's wife, children travel, watch the tournament, nor will they even let players visit a restaurant without threat of disqualification. Yeah, that, that's just part of this, and I'm going to keep saying it, ridiculousness. I mean, you mentioned it. 60,000 people allowed at Wembley for soccer. 140,000 at the silver track, for, at the silver, uh, I forgot the name, the racetrack, 140,000 are gonna be there. Plus the week before Wimbledon, all those people are all are gonna be together. That's even worse and you're not doing anything for them there. I mean, I don't understand it. I, I thought we were past this. And okay, let's just be fair, right? Uh, they're saying because now they're getting, they got like 34,000 more cases uh, in the UK and all because of the Delta variants. And uh, apparently it accounts for 95% of the, of the COVID cases in the UK, but I, that's all great and good. But why are you taking with the players if they're vaccinated? Because here, th these are some of the most strict uh, restrictions that they have faced in months. They come here and they're playing and they, why they don't see the samples that have been taken right now for all these tournaments that have been happening. Just make the test to the ones that are not vaccinated. And if they are not, then like it happened to, unfortunately to John Ram. And other, I think that by now we would be moving towards getting some everywhere. You're adapting rules and things like even in the restaurants, they're, they're taking precautions and making sure that you're safe, doing the, 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 the plexiglasses and all this stuff, moving away the thing. So everything is adapting, but you're, you're going to tell me that in the RNA, RNA cannot come up with something that they can actually help the players. Now, here, here we're talking about a major. 
We're not talking about just a small tournament on the challenger uh, on the challenge tour. Okay, we're talking about a major for the family, for the player that wins there. That's history. You want to share it with your family. That means that they have to, if they're going, you're going to have to go through a five-day quarantine process and all that stuff to even get there. And the players, like you mentioned, they're going to go on their own. Uh, that's That happens all the time. They go up front. They go with the caddies. They're in the practice rounds and all that stuff. And that's fine and dandy. But when their family's coming, now you're telling me they're going to have to go through all that process. And they cannot share a big time moment like this of winning or at least competing in the open, which is something historic, right? You don't get to play it uh, all the time. So anyway, the thing is, I they have to, they, they're not going to, but I would think that by now we would have better measures and be able to do something like, hey, have some, some, some additional or alternate processes if something happens. We're talking about professional athletes. Everybody knows what they're up to and, and what they're facing. At this time, we, we have been over a year going over this. We have learned even about this new variant. And I'm not trying to tell anyone not to use masks or anything like that, or don't do social distancing. I'm saying we have learned a lot about it. And I think by now, you would allow people to at least make their own choices. For yeah, I'm going to read you something, Carlos, and then I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Our absolute priority is maintaining the safety of the players, fans, and all involved in the Open. And we are doing as much as we can to minimize the risk. We fully recognize the continuing impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, and that case numbers are rising in many parts of the country. The UK has strict contract tracing legislation in place, and we are creating a minimized risk environment to protect players, caddies, officials, and staff. It is extremely important that we all follow the protocols. The players and their management teams have been very accommodating and appreciate the challenges that the pandemic is creating for all of us. Now, I'm going to tell you, this sounds an awful lot like legalese. This sounds like a gaggle of attorneys got together and crafted this thing. And on top of it, they're probably attorneys for the insurance company. Because if you remember, last year the Open wasn't held. It was the only major that wasn't held because they had a $20 million insurance policy that they collected on. They got 20 mil for not holding the event. What a deal, okay? So uh, the insurance company, I'm sure, is inserting themselves in this thing and say, okay, you guys are going to have the tournament, and we're insuring you got all the liability here. We're going to make sure we're not being liable. We're going to put all this on the players and make sure that some player, if he gets this and gets sick and can't play or whatever, his family can't sue us because we're going to do the best we can to keep them safe. So that's what this looks like to me, Carlos. Um, I think uh, maybe if I were a player, I would consider staying home. However, their sponsors may have a say in that um, because the sponsors expect their player to be there if they're eligible to get their, their product on camera, that 10 logos that they have on their shirts and their caps and the side of their cap and their, you know, lapels. And I, I, I've never, can you, some of these European guys with their sponsors, have you seen all the, the Asian guys, especially, oh my goodness, we got to get some sponsors, Carl. We got to start getting some sponsors on our shirts and our collars and all this stuff. But anyhow, um, even with all these protocols, Carlos, there's going to be an open championship. That's a good thing. July 15th through the 19th. There's going to be a winner, and we're going to have it for you here, right here on Back Nine Report TV. We will, and uh, you know it's unfortunate that the the players have to go through this. Um, yeah, they, there has been a lot of frustration, and you can see it by what they're saying. You know, hey, some of them say they care more about the beer revenue than us having something, right? And uh, insurances and all that. I mean, when you come down to this, it has been proven that you cannot prove where you got it. Okay. It can be anywhere in the, where you are. It could be at the bar. It could be anywhere, even, even in your own home, you can get it. It doesn't matter whatever you touch, wherever you are, 
So to me, it's just ridiculous that you have to say, okay, I'm going to do all this just to keep you safe. Then just keep the inner bubble all the time, right? But at the same time, it's the open, and that's what they're being saying. If it wasn't because if it's, it's the open, I would just not go. That's what some of the players have said, and pretty understandable. But hey, that's the 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 the, the age we're living in. Uh, unfortunate, ridiculous that that is happening to them. But hey, we're gonna have an open July 15, and we're gonna be here commenting about it. I, I really can't wait to see what our colleague Kieran Clark, the European golf guru, has to say about this. Uh, because he's the local there. So hopefully he'll give us some insight when we have him in for that purge, Fred. Yeah, Carl, it should be interesting. Um, three weeks away and we're already, uh, you know, having com some controversy with the Open Championship. So, you know, uh, there is no such thing as bad publicity. So the Open is getting a lot of free PR. You know, what? what's the worst thing that's going to happen is that unfortunately, Bryson DeChambeau and Bruce Kepka cannot stay together. Uh, <laughs> they can't have dinner together. <laughs> they can't. That's just one of the biggest losses in golf right now. Oh, I that's mean, awful. Yeah. I, I can't stand that. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred, thank you. And everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, let us know your comments. Okay, subscribe to our channel so you can keep up to date with the latest in golf news and information just like this that just happened this week. Uh, and we'll keep bringing it to you. Thank you for joining us.